Check, 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 check. Hello and welcome to Inside Music, episode number 94. I'm your host, James Shotwell, and I've got a great conversation for you. I was actually hoping to get this episode out yesterday, October 20th, but I hit a few delays and then I lost my voice. And if you can tell, I'm still, I'm still a little sick. I'm still all blocked up. It's gross. It's disgusting. Let's move on. My guest this week is Jennifer Bartlett, vocalist for the band Lokella. And if that name is not exactly ringing a bell to you, there's a good reason for that. As of today, October 21st, Lokella has officially released their debut EP and it contains all the material that they've recorded to date, which means when I actually recorded this episode earlier this week, there was no music from Lokella, but the people in the band may ring some bells. Jennifer herself and her husband Evan were in a band called Fine Fine Titans, who broke up earlier this year after several years of rising through the alternative underground. Lokella is a little bit different, though it still maintains the edginess of Fine Fine Titans. It also explores the melodic and jazz elements present in modern rock and roll music. They're trying to do something a little bit different than most underground rock bands, and I, I really like it, and I think you're going to too. So in this episode, I'm going to talk to Jennifer about the end of their last band, the beginning of this one, and everything in between. We're going to get into her history, the Michigan music scene, and where she hopes to go in the future. You know, Lokella is kind of a passion project that they you know, purposely kept quiet until the very last minute. The band was only announced a couple of weeks ago, and as I already mentioned, they didn't put any music out until they released their entire EP all at once. And they've actually also chosen to release a visual EP, which means there's a video for all four songs, and they're all strung together in one long 20-minute clip that you can find on YouTube as soon as you listen to this podcast. But I would prefer that you wait until after the podcast is over to check it out. It's good, but the podcast, I think, might be better. And that's just my opinion. I mean, it's a great, it's a great, I hope that this is good. You know what I mean. Anyways, so that's what happened on the show this week, and it almost didn't happen. I actually had someone else scheduled to be on episode 94, and they had to drop out due to a bus fire. Maybe you can figure out who that band is, but they're going to be on the show next week. So for now, we're going to do a little bit of a Discovery episode. But unlike most Discovery episodes, where there's a lot of material out there and the band's already been on the road, this band has literally just started. You can be on the ground floor of Lokella's career as a supporter if you go out and support them by visiting the website thebandlokella.com. But before we get there... I need to tell you a few quick things. First and foremost, this episode of Inside Music and all episodes of Inside Music are brought to you by Holix, the music industry's leading digital promotional distribution platform. And what that means is that Holix works with record labels and independent artists all over the world to share new and unreleased music without fear of piracy. For more information on Holix, you can visit holix.com. That's H-A-U-L-I-X.com. That comes with a free 30-day trial. Again, that's H A U. Lix.com. Secondly, I'd really love it if you followed the podcast on Twitter. We're so close to 300 followers, and with episode 100 right around the corner, I think it would just be great if we could kind of do everything all during the month of November or even October, hint, hint. Finally, I need to ask you to support Lokella. Up-and-coming bands have a hard time getting anywhere today, especially with the amount of competition. So if you like a band, you can you need to show your support. You need to buy tickets to their shows, you need to buy the music, you need to stream the music, you need to tell your friends. Lokella is a great band doing something utterly unique in the world of rock and roll, and I really think you're going to love them. So please, seek out their music and show them some support. Now I'm going to play a little music from their new EP, a song called Cry Wolf, and then we're going to get into the conversation with Jennifer. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next week. Enjoy the show. To the future you and me So anyways, what is life like in the Midwest today? Um, it's kind of dreary right now. It's it's gray and a little chilly and pretty perfect. So do you guys live in Grand Rapids? Yes. All yep, right. we all are right here in west side of Michigan. Are you, uh, are you Grand Rapids natives? Or I mean Michigan natives? Yeah, we're all natives to Michigan. I... I am from the Detroit area, but uh, I've been here for about six years. So, when did you and Evan meet then? Oh man, Evan and I met about um, almost nine years ago in Grand Rapids. Uh, my old band was playing a show here, and he happened to be at the show. Um, he didn't say anything to me though. <laughs> Instead, he like went home and looked up our band on MySpace and then contacted me personally and then we just 
started chatting and kind of the rest leads to history. No, no, it's okay. This is a show all about detailing history, so it's it's fine. We're gonna we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of it. So I guess maybe the better place to start is your own uh, your own history and music because like I you and I didn't meet until Fine Fine Titans was like well underway, and I know that that's not like your origin story in music. So so maybe we should go back a little bit further and like when did you when did you start like playing in bands or writing music like where did that begin and then how did we get I guess at least up until this new band kind of started to take shape so where did it begin wow okay um I've been performing forever uh and you know since I was young whether I was playing flute or singing and a talent show the choir whatever um it wasn't until college where I started playing in a band or singing, I should say, singing in a band. And I had this, I was just thinking about this yesterday, actually. Um, it, when I went to Western Michigan, uh, my friends and I had this little cover band, and we would only play for parties. And uh, we didn't even have a name for the band. We just got together, and we covered, um, let's say, like, Incubus, and Foo Fighters, Blur, uh, Head Automatica. I think we even had some... Oh, I can't remember what else we played, but it was just fun. Uh, and it didn't last very long. But at the time, I was still living in Kalamazoo, and um, this band had approached me. They were just starting a new band called Their Teeth Will Be of Lions. And they were looking for um, a second vocalist, a female vocalist. And we got in touch, and we wrote our first song together. And I was with them for, I don't know, a year, year and a half or so. And uh, when we were playing out, that's when I had met Evan. And he had previously been in a few other bands in Grand Rapids. And um, it took us years to find Nate and Chris. Nate and Chris are very recent in like the last few years. So that's, they're still, we're still learning a lot about each other. But um, Evan and I know of each other for nine years now. Now, how did you and Evan initially bridge that gap between, I mean, did you guys start working together before you were together, or is it the other way around? Um, you know, it was kind of the other way around, really. Uh, I was still with Their People Be Lions for a little bit before I decided that I wanted to move back to Detroit area, and so I left the band. And of course, Evan had kind of stopped playing music for a short period and wanted to get back into it. And so we were like, well, why don't we just play music together? And that was part of the reason we moved back to Detroit was to start something new out there. Well, we didn't really get involved with any of the local musicians out there at all. We were having a really hard time doing so. And so we moved back to Grand Rapids uh, because we still had a lot of connections here. And uh, then we, once we did, I mean, we were already, already three years down the line at that point being together. And then we finally found some other musicians in the area, started Shine Fine Titans, um, did that for five years, almost six years. And it was like so many members coming and going. And Evan and I learned a lot about being in a band together with other people while we were together. Um, and, and it was just, huge learning curve huge learning curve and at times we were like why are we doing this together this is maybe a little crazy we're maybe a little crazy for doing this but at the end of the day we worked pretty well together <laughs> i don't know now it's it's really easy to kind of separate the, the music from the relationship and and really not make things weird when when we're in a band together and when there are other people around we never wanted the band to be about us. So, yeah, that's, that's that. <laughs> now, there too will be alliance for people that live outside the regional Michigan music scene. Uh, pretty eclectic project. So with your more recent offerings or explorations into music have always have been, had a little bit more of a rock harder edge to them. Is that kind of the sound mm -hmm. that you're always that you've always kind of been going after? Or was there a point where you're like, I think I want to go heavy? I don't really know. To be honest with you, um, I I think Evan has a lot to do with that. I actually, I grew up really um, listening to, you know, one hand, 
uh, my dad was really into classic rock. So I was also into classic rock. And my mom was really into jazz music. And I listened to a lot of R&B. I loved R&B growing up. That was like my calling. <laughs> well, so I thought. So I thought that was my calling. Um, but at the same time, I was really always drawn into more alternative um, music. And so when like the MySpace era came around and a lot of these post-hardcore bands were coming into play, it was cool for me because I found that alternative rock plus more of some, more of some soulful jazzy influences uh, when it came to vocals. And so I really gravitated towards um, the emo culture, I guess, if you want to call it. And Evan was really into much heavier music, a lot more, metal and things like that. And I was never really a huge metal fan, even though I appreciate a lot of it. Um, so uh, coming, coming together, it just kind of was like, Oh, well, this is the collaborative. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. And coming from, especially uh, West Michigan in particular, but Michigan music scene in general, like heavy is kind of a thing. Like our, most of our biggest exports in the last decade as like musically have been heavier bands even like a lot of speed has like an edge to it but i think more of like it still remains as one of the bigger bands that we've kind of produced or we've oh. as romans so i guess it, it probably helps to play into that a little bit at least in terms of getting yourself out there absolutely yeah and and it was you know i guess at first with with our old band um you know at the time we were heavily influenced by every time I die, that was something that was pretty much on constant rotation for us. And so it kind of just seeped into our brains and just happened to, I don't know, influence us in certain ways. Um, but, but, you know, glass jaw and deft tones are, will always be also two huge influences for us. Um, there, and, and those are constantly playing as well. So that really, I think that in stone for us as well, just because we loved it and it spoke to us. And I don't, I don't know, I guess you kind of, when you really bury yourself in something, you're going to be influenced by it no matter what you do. Now, a lot of people probably heard of you uh, through Fine Fine Titans, your last project that you guys had there for a while. And then that, that kind of died. Was it earlier this year? Or was that last year? Yeah. Earlier this year. It was this year. Yeah, because we saw yeah, we each other this year on, when you guys were still together. Yeah, and we were on tour in April. And it was, I'm not kidding. The minute we got home, we are like, well, that was a great run. We had a lot of fun. Um, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, okay. So that's, that's like, yeah. So I guess maybe that's where we should kind of move to because that's how we get into what, what you're, we're here to promote and talk about today. But... So what 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 was going on then? Because I saw you guys like the last second to last day of that tour in, in Pennsylvania. We were all together. It was a great show. Went really well. So when you get back home, what what changed or what was changing for you guys? Where it kind of felt like it was time to put that to rest. Um, it, it had been in the works for a little while. Um, really for the like the last year or so with Fine Fine Titans, Evan and I had really just we're trying to figure out whether we should push for fine, fine Titans or we should move on. Um, and we were kind of split down the middle. Evan checked out way earlier than I did mentally uh, and emotionally. He just wasn't feeling connected to the music anymore. Uh, I was maybe more so, con I was always really connected to the songs, but more so connected to the amount of work that we had put in, in the last five years. I mean, it was, it really was such an important project to both of us. And I was having a hard time letting it go. I still had faith, but we kept hitting all of these really tough benchmarks. Um, people, a lot of coming and going as members in the band, that took a hard toll on us. Um, it, it, Evan took it really personally a lot of the times. And then some, just a lot, just kind of a string of bad luck, I think. I, I feel like the band was kind of cursed from the beginning. And we didn't always think that, but I don't know. I I think we just hit a point where we were just so exhausted and trying to make something that seemed so impossible to work. We had a lot of really great opportunities and we're thankful for a lot of that, for those opportunities. But 
it just got exhausting and it kind of, you know, we didn't want it to be about us and we wanted it to be about the, the band. And so, you know, Nate, the drummer, he had been helping us out in Fine Fine Titans for the last year. Um, he hadn't written on any of the albums, but we really hit our groove when he entered the band and we really loved playing with him. We loved being around him um, and hanging out with him, his his energy, his drive, his talent. We just really liked him and we wanted him to have more of a part instead of just kind of being like a fill-in. Mm-hmm. And so we're like, let's start something new with you. And then um, right before we left for tour with Fine Fine Titans in April, Chris on guitar, he messaged us. We had played with him and his previous band, uh, Romance for Ransom, a few months back. And he messaged us and said, you know, my band just broke up. I really, I've always really liked what you guys had, like, are doing. And you guys just seem really cool. You know, we should, like, hook up. We should jam, whatever. And we kind of, like, left him in the dust for a little bit. And I was like, you know, we're trying, we're still trying to figure things out. Let me get back to you. We would like to set something up, but we're really not sure what's going to go on. Uh, so as soon as we got back from tour, I was like, okay, um, we need a few weeks. We need to kind of mourn this <laughs> and kind of let this go for a minute. Uh, but let's hook up in a few weeks. And then we did. And I felt like as soon as we had everyone together in a new, in a new mindset to write together, um, it felt like a weight had lifted. And we were just, I don't know, those guys started cranking out tunes like it was nobody's business. Their, their chemistry was really incredible. And there was the best part about it, which we had a problem with um, a few members in their past band, was that there was no ego involved. It mm-hmm. was really just, we're going to sit down, we're going to play some music. <laughs> I like that. So it, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was really pretty. It, and pretty. <laughs> it was not what those guys was going to hear, but it was. It was beautiful, the way that it just kind of shaped. Mm-hmm. I do want to. I want to touch on the Fine Fine Titans thing for a little bit more, just because I, I am curious about. I'm curious about that arc and the walls you kind of hit. Because my buddy Eric Morgan used to write a column where he'd talk about the struggles that his sign band, a hero of fake, had when they were together, and he used to refer to this thing called the two hundred dollar hump that he said was like this mountain for up and coming bands and kind of that harder rock vein where it's like you you can do so much, but getting to a point where you're actually bringing in more money every time you go out or you're producing, uh, you, you know, at the end of the year you have more to show than you did the year prior, that that seems to be like this impossible thing that kind of kills bands. Is that is that still kind of accurate? Like you kind of hit this point where it's like, okay, people, more people know, but we've kind of plateaued in terms of like this business that we have? Yeah, yeah, I would say that factors into it. Um, you know, it's funny because Money for for Evan and I, when it came to the band, was wasn't something we talked about very often. Uh, we have our full time jobs, and so we're not trying. We're not making music to support ourselves. In the likelihood that we were able to, that would be amazing. But that always seems like such a lofty goal. So when we had some past members come in and expect to be paid a certain amount for shows or to be paid at all or to, to see money coming in or not have to invest at all in things like music videos or I don't know, a band van or, I mean, there, it was no problem buying gear, but um, they didn't want to invest in anything else. And, and so money was an issue for a lot of other people, which is, I mean, we understand because you have to make a living and not everyone is in a position that Evan and I are in with our jobs where we can make it work. Um, but the money, maybe not so much. We didn't get to play as many shows as we, as we would have liked to with Fine Fine Titans because we had so many people coming and going. We always were having, it felt like we were always having to find show ins And so we'd have to teach the music all over again from square one. Um, we toured infrequently because we never could find people who were able to give up a week or two and, and invest in the project because it, maybe it didn't feel personal to them 
I don't know. We just never got to play as much as we really wanted to and should have. And so I think that ultimately led to a lot of frustration and resentment as well um, because we felt stifled because we had all this music that we couldn't even perform. So, it's, yeah, that I think that had more to do with it than the money. But, I mean, it all plays a part. It all plays together. Definitely. So... So I'm curious about, so the new, you guys get back and things kind of start to come together pretty naturally, but you made a conscious decision to kind of <clears throat> keep details on the public front, like at a bare minimum, at, at, even that you guys were doing anything, let alone that you had some new projects <laughs> in the works. So I, so, so I guess my first question there would be like, what was the motivation between, all right, let's just not say anything until we're certain that this is going to go somewhere. And then when, when was it, when, how did you know it was time to kind of go public with what you had been working on? Well, we kept it really quiet mostly at first because we didn't know when we were going to be ready and we didn't, you know, as soon as you say, especially when you just, you know, called your, your band on hiatus and people want to know, they want to know constantly, like, so what are you guys doing? What, when is there going to be new music? Are you going to, are you going to play a show soon? Are you going to put, something out and we still did kind of get a little bit of those questions. Um, I have a lot of clients who follow me on social media and love to hear about my personal life. And so at the salon, I'm always being asked, you know, what's going on with you guys? You know, I see your, they, they might see a picture of us um, jamming in our basement or something and they think it's fine, fine Titans and, or who knows what, they don't know what's going on. And I always said, Oh, we're just, we're just hanging out. We're just, jamming because we really didn't know we didn't know when we were going to be ready as soon as we got our demos done and we were able to book studio time to record drums um we we're like okay let's do this evan had just um kind of built his own studio in our house and he really wanted to take a stab at recording us everything but the drums uh, because we don't have a room for it or, or any of the, the tools really we needed. Um, and so that was also another thing where he was like, I don't know how, how long it's going to take me to get to hang with this. Or we're going to, like, I don't know when we're going to be able to put this out. Well, things kind of progressed really quickly. And we, uh, at some point, I don't know when or exactly how this happened, um, we were booked on sold out fest. And so once that happened, we're like, okay, that's in the end of October. We should probably have something out by then. And I was so gung ho about making it a, a visual EP because I, <laughs> I just love music videos. I'm obsessed with music videos and I always have been. Um, and at some point the guys were like, are you sure we have enough time to do this? And I was like, no, no problem. We can totally get this done. And then I'm looking at my own schedule with work and my other obligations. And I'm thinking, what the hell am I thinking? How are we going to have time to do this? Um, but I don't know. Once I set out to do something, I have to do it or else I feel like an asshole. Ooh, can I say that on your podcast? You can say whatever um, you want, of course. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. I feel like an asshole. And it, even though no one knew we were doing this and I didn't want to tell anyone because I wanted to make a good impact. I wanted to be like, Hey, by the way, this is what we've been doing for six months in case you're wondering. Um, cause I didn't want to leave any questions. I just wanted to put it out there. I just get sick of random people questioning all the time. Like what's going on and having to explain it a million times. So now I'll just show you, this is what we did. <laughs> Yeah, so Evan Evan decided to that he wanted to record since so you guys you guys did the entire EP that you're about to I, okay I guess I'm all over the place let me, let me get this into like a straight line um, so tomorrow we're recording this on Thursday October twentieth so tomorrow you guys are going to release a visual EP you know is is the audio also going to be available separately tomorrow like are we going to be able to yeah. buy the album tomorrow too. Everything will be free. Oh, okay. It'll, 
yeah, it is. I mean, that's another reason we were kind of keeping this on the down low because we want it to be free. And I mean, not saying that everything in the future will be free and people will be able to donate if they'd like, but this one will be free. And yes, it will be available MP3 as well. Um, and we'll have that all up on our website. And, uh, I, yeah, I, I already forgot the other part of the question, sorry. <laughs> no, I, 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 that was pretty much the core of it. So where did the, where did the group name come from? And, uh, I guess the EP name while we're at it, let's go ahead and knock those out. Well, I'm sorry, we lost the second <laughs> part of that. Oh, the, uh, the story behind the, the new band name and the title of the EP. Oh, okay. So, Lokella, um, I'm sure there's there's other ways to pronounce it as well. Lakala is uh, German origins, also um, Hawaiian origins. It's it's uh, it means famous spear or famous warrior, and I don't really know how we picked that. Well, I mean, I do. I I did some, you know, Google searching, but <laughs> it doesn't really mean anything in particular. Uh, I was kind of sick of the long drawn out names that I had had for my bands in the past and that I didn't like necessarily come up with or anything. So it's bands that I've been in. Um, and I, I just wanted something quick, something different, something that was easily recognizable. I think if you Google Locala right now, you'll find some, I don't know, some kind of hazelnut spread like Nutella that used to be available yes. in Europe. I, I don't even remember. I don't, I, I don't think it's available anymore. I'm not totally sure. But, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It just struck a chord with me when I, when I found it. And that was kind of it, to be honest. Nothing really fun. No, I like it. I like it. And what about the EP title? Because I don't even think you got, I don't even know if you've told people what it is yet. Yeah, so the EP title, The Worst Of, was was more so a joke that happened when we were practicing one night. Uh, because, you know, so many bands do the best of, and that's, you know, after they put out so many albums. Well, this is the first album, and hopefully from here, the songs only get better. <laughs> so literally, these are the worst songs that we hopefully will be putting out <laughs> that's it <laughs> and also that's not it that's that's really not the only explanation i mean it does tie into the lyrics so the story it's of the lyrics and, and the reason why they're they're kind of placed i guess the songs are placed in the order that they are it's just it's to tell a story about just pe people in our, um, I don't know, how insane and crazy and kind of psychotic people are, or kind of messed up. And we, we go through these phases um, of just, I don't know, being trapped or feeling trapped and feeling, um, I don't know, boxed in. And then, but, but at the same time, we're still animals. We're still creatures of habit. And so we're always trying to, I don't know, make up for one thing or another. And this is really the worst explanation ever. I could probably write this down a lot better than I can say it. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's so fine. Sorry. You, haven't, you, <laughs> you legitimately haven't discussed most of this stuff like in this manner yet, period. So I think you're I think you're allowed at least one interview where it's like I don't the words are hard to put together. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no I, words. I think I need a few more cups of coffee. But when I was listening to the EP this morning, I, I was struck by the fact that every song title had an animal name in it. And I was like, oh, I see what you're doing here. <laughs> I see what you're doing making a cohesive a cohesive effort here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's let's talk a little bit about the video because by I, the first people that listen to this they can't see it yet but tomorrow on Friday people will be able to see the video it runs 20 minutes long almost so it's, it's basically a short film that's four music videos tied together so I, so so you guys had three goats moving pictures are those are those friends of yours that you had make this video for you like how did how did you kind of get it go get the production going how did it all come together yeah, well, we've worked with them for the past two years. 
I think overall, Three Goats has done, I think we did eight videos for us and Fine Fine Titans. And so we've, we've developed a relationship that has been really fun and, and I think beneficial for both parties. And it really allows both of us to be creative and sort of flexible. I don't know. Sometimes I, I can get a little, uh, uh, overzealous, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> if you will. But it's, uh, yeah, so for three years, four years, I think they put out, I, our first video that we've ever done with them, we put out in 2014, which we filmed in thir- 2013. So they're so much fun to work with. And Andy, the, the director, he often will go out on the road with us as well. And sometimes he'll film and, and we just like him being around. We like all the guys that make up three goats. They're just good, fun people. And uh, it's I, the way that their work has progressed even in these few short years has been really incredible to watch. I think they're really talented guys. Okay. Uh, how much, so, how would you describe, I guess, the I don't think that there's necessarily a plot, but the the visuals of the EP because they are they all kind of do tie together, and there is some performance footage in your basement and such. But there's also a lot more artistic expression in some of the visuals. You have some dancers and things like that, and I'm making it sound like a much larger production because it is it is a pretty low key production. You guys keep it fairly simple, mm-hmm. but you do you do kind of express yourselves in a lot of new ways that we maybe didn't see with Fine Fine Titans. So was that all from your collective imagination? Was that the Three Goats guys? Where did where did all of those ideas come from? It was it was a collective for sure. Um, I came I came to Andy uh, from Three Goats. I came to him with a few simple ideas, um, and maybe only one or two very specific spot, like shots in my head. But I really wanted him to have freedom of expression as well. I wanted because I knew he was going to be putting in long hours and long days. And um, so I really wanted him to enjoy the project and be proud of it as well. So yeah, I came to him and we had a meeting and I explained what each song was about. And we came up with like um like a sort of a mood for each song, whether it be like a color or, or a simple concept. And, um, we said, okay, well, let's let's find some locations for these places to, to reflect that mood. And uh, we didn't really have a lot of time or budget for actors. Um, and, I mean, time was really the hard part. Time was the hardest thing to find for this project. We had some really, really late nights. Uh, the dancer in Cry Wolf, she is uh, part of... Uh, the burlesque troupe that I'm in. And so the minute I, I don't know, I came to her and I said, Hey, do you want to be in this video? She said, yes, absolutely. And she's like, no, no questions asked. Yes, I will do this. She stayed with us at the studio until like 3 a.m. dancing and standing around and waiting for us. And uh, so, yeah, anyway, we, you know, we got shots where we could and I'll, I'll, there's a lot of things in there that we, we didn't see the video up until last night. Last night was the first time we saw the whole thing. And there are so many times where Evan and I looked at each other while we're watching it, we're like, holy shit, how did Andy do that? Or holy, holy crap. Like, I had no idea he was going to find some other actresses and, and tie in some other things. And I, I don't know. He just really exceeded our expectations when it came to that. So there wasn't a whole lot of discussion there. <laughs> so I'm curious when you when you kind of drop everything at once. So tomorrow people are going to get to kind of meet the band for the first time. Really, they're going to hear the band for the first time. They're going to see the visuals. They're going to be able to download the EP. So so where do you go from here? Because I feel like you got this one big kind of push all at once. And then what are we? What can we expect? How are you going to keep keep the name out there? Keep kind of building this movement that you've started. Well, now that we'll have a, a product or or some content, um, we'll definitely be booking shows. 
And meanwhile, continuing to write. Uh, I don't think these guys ever stop writing, and I certainly don't either. So, I don't know. I think I think it'd be really smart. We I think we all agree that it would be really smart to continuously put out EPs at, at a quicker rate, even though an LP would be great. But it's I don't know. I I kind of like sticking to like a mood or a style for each. EP and just kind of seeing how we progress instead of taking a year or two to write and record a full length. Um, I, I think it allows us for more creative freedom as well. And who knows? I really hope that we can book some tours in the coming year and just seeing how far we can take this. And who knows? Who knows? We just, it might not go anywhere at all, and that's fine, because at the end of the day, we just want to be happy with whatever we are putting out into the world. Do you think you'll keep doing the home recording angle? Is that Evan got the bug now? Is this going to stay the way you guys do, at least for now, produce records? We, we go back and forth. He definitely will, will still be recording. Um, but I think the, the really, I mean, he had a few weeks where he was just working around the clock, you know, working his full-time job, taking freelance from other clients and working on mixing this while learning. He's learning his new tools. He's learning a lot about the process. And it it was stressful. It, it was really stressful for him, even though he loved it. And, you know, he's hypercritical of himself, of course, but we all are so happy with what he did. Um, so I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. I think we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I don't see him hanging up the towel anytime soon. I think he would like to keep doing this for as long as he can. Well, that's great to hear. I mean, I, I like the EP. I, I just heard it this morning, so I, it's my first impressions. I like it. Um, <laughs> it's hard to go a deep dive. It's, it's a lot to consume all at once. So I do think that the, there, yeah. is, there is some, uh, you know, there's some time there where you're releasing all the videos at once, but if you really wanted to, you could chop them up or you could promote them individually yeah. down the line. So there's room there to grow. And you guys, you guys have some, sh like your first show is coming up. Is it this weekend? Yeah, Kalamazoo this weekend at Shakespeare's. Okay, and then and then where's next? Is that the only show you have right now? No, we'll we'll play again. Um, let's see, next Saturday, the October twenty ninth, and I always say it wrong, Poughkeepsie, New York. Poughkeepsie. At <laughs> Poughkeepsie. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was Poughkeepsie forever, so <laughs> I'll never get it right. Uh, yeah, it's at Soul Out Festival, and mm. with um, every time I die, it's straight from the path. A lot of really heavy bands have been <laughs> like, oh, we're gonna. You know, like a sore thumb, but whatever. Yeah, you know, I people like variety, right? We didn't even think to mention this since people haven't heard the music. I, it, I, they don't really know what they're going to hear. You could be a rap project for all they know tomorrow. But that's not what it is. Um, <laughs> you guys, it is. It is kind of an interesting. It is an interesting sound because I don't think it's going to be. You can't just say like, "Oh, it's a rock band" or "It's a hard rock band." There's a little bit of those jazz influences you mentioned in there. There's a lot of there's a lot of different ideas in the pot. So how are you going to tell people? How are you going to describe the band to people? That's been the hardest question. <laughs> Thirty have, minutes in, we finally no, got there. <laughs> I have no freaking clue, honestly. And you know, I, I've had this question from a few people so far in my close group who haven't heard it, most, no one really has heard it yet. And uh, I don't know what to say. So this is what I say. I say, you know, when you look in the mirror at yourself, you see yourself completely different than everyone else. So when it comes to making music, it's the same way. Um, you're really hypercritical. You might be zoning in on parts that in really focused on things that no one else will notice. And so, I don't know. It's so hard to describe your own music because there are so many influences. Um, I, I guess it does. It's rock. It's rock. I don't know. <laughs> rock is whatever you whatever you say it is. So that works. It's rock. It is rock. But there, it's there's there's an, like I said, there's elements of jazz. There's, it, there there are some melodic moments. There are some heavier things. It's a, I, I think anyone that likes 
rock should give it a try. I mean, it seems generic, but like just swing for the fences and you'll find your audience. You'll, your niche will develop itself. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of just wait for people to tell me what they think it is. And I just go, <laughs> okay, cool. That sounds great. Yeah. I mean, I think that's how it works for most artists, right? Like you don't, you don't yeah. create your own genre. People tell you that you created your own genre. Like you, they, they tell right. you what you did. So yeah, that's fine. Just put it out there. Let's see what the people think. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so where... We should have had, like, we... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, go, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. I was going to... We actually joked about um, creating, like, a focus group. <laughs> and just having them sit down and, and to tell them, tell us their thoughts. Like, not, not necessarily if they like it or not. Because I really could care less if people like it. I just want to know what it sounds like to them. Like, what mm. kind of genre? Like, what is... <laughs> what does this taste like? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. No, I like that. I know. It's not that ridiculous. I don't think that at all. Because I know that major labels do that kind of thing all the time. They, when they have a new pop star or someone they're trying to develop and they want to know whether what the size of the market is, they do focus groups. That's how you do it. You're just doing it all at once in the public eye for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no big deal. No big deal. No pressure. No pressure. If you're yeah. happy with it, that's what all that matters. The rest is just icing on the cake. Exactly. Um, so, where can people where can people keep up with keep up with the band because it's brand new and I'm sure you guys are going to be working uphill to build followers. So, where do we go to find everything? Where do people go these days? Like Snapchat? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, definitely Facebook. Facebook is pretty much the easiest right now. Uh, we do have a Twitter and an Instagram. Um, I I can create a Snapchat. I just haven't done it. I so hard for me to jump on that bandwagon. Yeah, it's a commitment. But, yeah, we'll be on all the social media platforms, but I'll probably keep um, Facebook updated most regularly and Instagram because I I'm pretty much the one on social media the most. So mm -hmm. if the guys want to help with the other one, they're welcome to do so. But yeah, um, the band Locella, mm -hmm. I all of all of the all of the social medias. <laughs> That's, and you should probably spell it because it's a new word for most people. <laughs> so, oh, good. Yeah, you're smart. Okay. So, Lokella. It's L O K E L L A. Yeah. It's like it, like, it's like it sounds, more or less. Yeah. Depending on yeah. how you pronounce it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've covered everything because there, I, there's literally nothing left to discuss. You, you guys, we've talked about everything up till this point. The, the, the EP will be out tomorrow. At, so people can watch the visual EP. It'll be on YouTube, and I'm sure you'll put it on Facebook and everywhere. But if they want to buy the music, is it going to be is it iTunes? Should they be looking to Bandcamp? Yeah. So we'll we'll send everyone to our website because then they can get the whole, the, everything will be available and, and directed. You can mm -hmm. find everything on the website. It's thebandlocella.com. All righty. And that, that's, that's what you need to know. Is there, okay. is there anything we're missing, Shen? Anything else? No, I don't think so. We've covered your whole I life. I think we're good. I mean, it only took us like 40 minutes. But that's good. We did good. Yeah. And if anyone wants to like, Send a pizza here. Um, I'll. That'd be cool, but I can't give you my address, so <laughs> you'll have to email it to me. Email yeah. me a pizza. Maybe if you send them proof of having bought the Locella Records, so they know you're legit. Then they'll <laughs> then they'll be more open to getting uh getting giving out the address, so you can send pizzas. You know, support by the record. Perfect. <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, I'll let you. I'll let you get to your day. I know you've got like a life to lead in Grand Rapids, and I've got one out here to do. But hopefully, I see you soon, and hopefully, all these people come and see the band soon. Yes. Thank you so much, James. No really problem. Good. Good luck on everything this weekend. We'll talk more after we're out of this, but I'll, I'll hang up now and let you go about your life. Okay. Perfect. All right. I'll talk Come to on. you soon. Yep. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>